Okay, let's do a couple trig ones. Okay, so here's the first example we'll do. Now, sometimes it's gonna be easier if you use a trig identity first. Now we could separate this and do one over cosine squared and sine squared over cosine squared. So we could do that and get secants and tangents, but that's actually making the problem more difficult. For here, there's actually an identity you can put in for one minus sine squared, and if you put that identity in, one minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared. So I can do zero to pi over four cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta, and then when I do that, the cosines are gonna cancel, and that's gonna leave me with uh, a one left over. So I have a one d theta, and when you integrate that, you're just gonna get theta, and that's between zero and pi over four. So then you're just gonna put pi over four in for each one, pi over four minus zero. That means that your answer is gonna be pi over four. So with these trig ones, sometimes make sure you, uh, you know, make sure you check to, to see if you can put an identity in or not, because if you can put an identity in, it might make the problem a whole lot easier. By doing that, the whole thing just canceled out to a one, and that was very easy to integrate. It would be easier than trying to go through and dividing all that by doing secant squareds and tangent squareds. Okay, for this next trig problem, you can't put an identity in here to make that any simpler, so we're just gonna integrate that one as is. So we're gonna integrate this, the d theta means that theta is the variable that, that we're gonna get out of this. So when we integrate the two, you're gonna get two theta. And then negative cosecant squared, if you take the antiderivative of all of that, that's gonna turn into cotangent. Okay, not squared, just regular cotangent, and we're using theta on that for a variable. We're doing this between pi over four and pi over two. So now we've got our Antiderivative, we're now ready to put in our numbers from the integral. So we first put one half in for both of those, so two times one half pi, I should say. And then we have plus cotangent pi over two, we do that part first. And then minus, all this will go in parentheses, we're gonna put the pi over four in there. So two times pi over four, and then plus cotangent pi over four. And now we're just gonna work this out. The twos are gonna cancel. You get a pi. Cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine. So cosine pi over two is zero. So that means that this whole thing is gonna end up being a zero there. Inside the parentheses, this part's gonna be pi over two. So we're gonna do minus pi over two and then minus cotangent pi over four. We just need to simplify that. Again, that's cotangent is cosine over sine. Uh, when you have uh, that as pi over four, you're gonna get a one. So pi plus zero minus pi over two minus one is what you'll get as a result. So when you do pi minus pi over two, you're gonna get pi over two and minus one. So pi over two minus one uh, would be the exact answer if you'd like to get common denominators you could do that as well, but either one of those will be the correct answer. If you see problems like this that have square roots in the bottom with an X out front, a lot of times these are ones that turn into the inverse trig functions. So you wanna go back and review those formulas we talked about before in the antiderivative section. Okay, so for this type of one, uh, we need to recognize the correct formula. If you have an X and a square root, that means it's gonna turn into an inverse secant. Now this right here, 4x squared, that can be written as 2x quantity squared. So because of that, that means that that's gonna appear inside your inverse secant, because remember, when you do inverse secant, it's inverse secant of k times x. The k value here is gonna be two, because that's inside there. So this will turn into inverse secant of 2x. So this whole thing actually gets converted into that one. So that's your complete antiderivative from this whole thing that you see here. We're still putting in our numbers, one half and one over root three. When we put that in, you're gonna get inverse secant. We're gonna do two times that one, so you'll get two over root three, because we're multiplying, this multiplies by two, and minus inverse secant of one half times two, which means that you're just gonna get a one inside here. So now it's just a matter of looking at our unit circle. 
Now, inverse secant is the reciprocal of, of inverse cosine. So I know that square root of three over two, I would get a pi over six. So because it's reversed, I know I'll get a pi over six for that one. And then this, inverse secant of one, okay, that's the same thing as uh, zero on it. Because um, again, you're looking for x value at that point. So you get pi over six minus zero, and it means your final answer is gonna be pi over six. So you can always uh, use your unit circle or you can work them out. If you have a graphing calculator, you can put those in as well.